Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro, assessing the accuracy of a classified image. In this video, I will discuss how to create accuracy assessment points and then how to use them to create a confusion matrix to assess the performance of your classification model. We have previously classified this original image with supervised classification into two broad classes impervious and pervious. In ideal scenario, you would like to visit the actual area so that you can record point locations and the nature of the point area manually. Now many times it is not feasible to visit all areas physically. In those cases, we can use the original image and generate random points throughout it using create accuracy assessment points tool. It will give the points an attribute based on the classified value of the image at the points locations. The accuracy assessment points will also have a field for the ground truth of the original image which we can manually fill in for each point. Inside the tool, we will be using the classified image as our input raster and because of that our target field will be classified, not the ground truth. We will go with 100 points. The sampling strategy parameter determines how points are randomly distributed across the image. The points can be distributed proportionally to the area of each class or it can be distributed completely randomly. Because our primary interest is in the accuracy of the impervious surfaces, which is the smaller of the two classes, we will equally distribute the points between each class for better representation. So we will select the equalized stratified random. Now in the result, you can see that 100 points have been randomly distributed all over this image. In the attribute table of this accuracy point data, there are two fields. One is classified and the another one is ground true. The classified contains values either 40 or 20. Previously, when we created this classified image, we assigned 20 for impervious surfaces and 40 for pervious surfaces in our classification schema. The other field ground truth has only minus 1. Minus 1 is the default value. Now we have to select each point and then click on zoom to and then zoom even more if you need to to figure out whether it falls on pervious or impervious surface. For example here it's on this forest area. So I will just double click and type in 40 here. I usually hide this classified field and also it's better not to consult this classified image just to avoid any kind of bias. Now you have to do the same thing for all these 100 points. This one seems like an impervious surface so I am going with 20 here. As you keep populating the ground truth field, don't forget to go to the edit tab and save them. Once you have populated the ground truth field for all the points, save it and now we move on to the confusion matrix. Before you do that, make sure to unhide this classified field. A confusion matrix is a table that compares the classified and ground truth attributes of accuracy assessment points and determines the percentage of accuracy between them. If the areas that were classified as impervious initially represent an impervious areas in the original imagery, the confusion matrix will have a high percentage and indicate higher accuracy. Inside the Compute Confusion Matrix tool, select the accuracy point data as your input. The result will be a standalone table which can be found right here. So as we open it, you can see that there are different columns and rows. The C underscore 20 and C underscore 40 columns represent points with a ground truth of 20 or 40. While the C underscore 20 and C underscore 40 rows represent points that were classified as 20 or 40. For example, these 45 points that were classified as impervious were on impervious surface on the original image as well. However, these 5 pervious points were wrongly classified as impervious point in our classified image. U accuracy field stands for user's accuracy. It represents the fraction of pixels classified correctly per total classifications. Here, the P accuracy stands for producer's accuracy. 
and it represents the fraction of pixels classified correctly by total ground truth. For example, 50 pixels were classified as impervious in total. Out of those 50, 45 was originally located on impervious surface. Therefore, the user's accuracy is 0.9 or 90%. Meanwhile, 46 pixels had a ground truth of impervious, of which 45 were correctly classified. And that leads to a producer's accuracy of approximately 0.98 or 98%. Finally, this kappa field gives an overall assessment of the classification's accuracy. In this example, it is 0.88 or 88%. Though 88% is not high enough, values above 85% is generally acceptable and is considered a fairly okay classification. Now, this value depends on different factors. A very generalized segmentation procedure or a too few training samples or training samples that cover too wide a variety of spectral signatures can lead to classification error leading to a lower kappa value. To recap, in this video, we discuss how to use the create accuracy assessment points and compute confusion matrix tools to assess the validity of the classification. We also discuss the possible factors that might cause a bad classification. I think this is a great stopping point. This has been Tessel Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.